Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and we're building this 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. everyone just a couple quick notes before we get started uh, first of all I want to apologize for the last video I know the sound in that was terrible uh, the colors were off some of the exposures were bad and I just wanted to take a second to explain what's going on and we took some of our advertiser money and put it back into the project of course and I got myself a new camera and it's a really nice camera and it's gonna get me a lot more flexibility with sound it's gonna give me uh, better control in low light and longer recording recording times and it's gonna make my job of filming a little bit easier which is very important now believe me I know the genius is in the craftsman and not the tool you could uh, give a skilled woodworker some hand tools and they can build you a beautiful piece of furniture you could give an iPhone to a professional filmmaker and they could make you a Hollywood style blockbuster so I'm not that guy I rely on technology to help make things easier and more fun for me now it's coming to the end of the year and I definitely don't say it often enough you know we've added thousands of subscribers this year and I know that we're still a tiny channel but uh, the fact that we've continued to grow I don't say it often enough to say thank you uh, we are so grateful to so many people who have sent us kind words via email or uh, in the comment section many people have gone to our website to make financial donations so many others have offered up different things to donate to the project like bronze, really nice bronze fixtures, uh, fasteners, adhesives, uh, links to different websites or products that they think we could use. And it really is just very generous and very grateful. And as someone who's kind of a private person, and I know that it's weird you're on YouTube and you're saying you're a private person, but truly I am, um, it is overwhelming sometimes to see the kind of kindness uh, that is out there. And we are very, very grateful. We're very grateful to uh, the advertisers that we got to work with. I'm proud of their products. I'm grateful to our sponsors, companies like Jamestown Distributors, which is an absolutely marvelous company, uh, great products, great tech support, and regular people. Uh, they came to us uh, because they saw us using Total Boat Epoxy. I didn't go to them, and I didn't start using Total Boat because they offered to give it to me. I was using it already, and they said, hey, uh, we see you're using Total Boat. Would you like to try a couple other products? And, you know, that kind of stuff is great. And we had only like a couple thousand subscribers back then. And it was just really generous. And uh, I can't thank... Uh, Kristen over at uh, Jamestown Distributors enough for her kindness over this year and last year. It's just been great. So thanks to everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully the production values are a little bit better and uh, you can see our improvement and we'll continue to see improvement as we go forward into 2021. So enjoy and we'll talk later. One of the unique features of a diesel duck is the raised shear section of the aft portion of the boat. And the first step to get that area planked was to adjust each frame bevel so that each plank flowed smoothly around the outside of the boat. Now I pre-cut a rough bevel on each of the frames when we assembled them just to make this process a little bit easier. So only a little fine tuning with the angle grinder with our sander attachment was required to get things flowing smoothly. Once that was complete, I was able to move on to addressing the actual raised shear line. And that plank that goes along that raised shear line is, of course, a flowing curve that goes from the aft bulkhead all the way to the transom. And there's quite a change in height from that aft bulkhead to the transom that I needed to address with the spiling technique. So I did a glue up with some total boat epoxy and some narrower pieces of white oak stock that I still had. 
Once that glue up fully cured, I took the assembly outside. I laid our spiling template on top, made our marks, and then cut it to shape. I wanted to make sure I used my best stock for the raised shear section of the boat, so I actually took all my remaining long pieces of white oak, planed everything down, and then selected the ones that I wanted in that area. I believe they're going to be visible from inside the boat. That's where our port lights are going to go, so I wanted them to be the best straight-grained or quarter-sawn ones that I could find. And then, since I was prepping stock, I decided to switch gears and move back into the engine room where we're addressing our diesel fiberglass epoxy tanks. In order to proceed, I needed to complete the front base support, and I need to have this accurately milled up, including all the joinery, so that I could accurately size the template for each of the side panels on the tank. Now, this process did involve using our table saw, our radial arm saw, both with the stacked dado heads, cutting some angles, but honestly, it really was not that complicated. Obviously, I'll still need to encapsulate each of these pieces in fiberglass and epoxy, but that's down the road. Right now, I just needed them to be accurate so that I could make my templates. Ba-da-ba-ba! 
All the base panels in each of the tanks were installed oversized on purpose to allow for the installation of this base support piece. I wanted to make sure that it was square to both of the bulkhead walls and on the ends of each of these base support pieces there's a double rabbit joint that the end panels will fit into. This will give us a lot of surface area for gluing and make for a very strong joint. Now temperatures out in the boat shed are just too cold to do any epoxy work right now and instead of trying to build a framework in there to tent the area so that I can add some heaters and do that glue up. In the next episode I hope to move on installing the pilot house sole because once that's in position we can attach our tent structure to that and then continue on doing our tank assembly in nice heated condition for the epoxy to cure. At long last, I was able to move on to the actual planking of the raised shear section of the boat. Now, I've said it a hundred times before that I wish I would have built my boat shed taller, but this is the situation I'm in. Fortunately, with scaffolding set at the appropriate height, it really wasn't too bad. I had to duck around and bend a bit to get each plank and all the fasteners installed, but it worked out in the end.
I really like how this is looking. The installation process went pretty smoothly. I love the look of this quarter sawn and rift sawn white oak. It looks absolutely beautiful. Our port lights will be installed up here and this area is probably going to be visible inside the boat. So I love how this uh, brown copper wood preservative stained this wood. I think it looks lovely and it's something to think about going forward when we start working inside the boat. However, I did notice a problem and I noticed it quite a while ago, but I waited until now to address it with the installation of the raised shear plank. And that was the unevenness of our deck beams that I installed. Now, while they were installed symmetrically from either side of the boat, the problem started with station 38, which is that one right behind me there. And coincidentally, that was the first uh, frame that I installed and I was a rank amateur at installing frames. Now that frame is actually not plumb, it's tilting back a little bit. And in the rolling curvature compound bevels of a boat, that leaning back caused the deck beam once installed to sit too low. It's actually about an inch too low. So we'll have to add on some material there to fix it. So when I installed my shear plank on the raised shear section, that's when we used our spiling technique to get a nice fair curve all along the raised shear section of the boat. And regardless of where the deck beams landed, I just wanted to have a nice fair curve that I could make matched to the other side so that they both sides look symmetrical. And that's what we'll have to do. Now we'll try to avoid removing material and erring on the side of adding material to make things uh, even, and that's no big deal, just a fact of laminating on some more pieces onto these deck beams and we'll fix the problem. And I just bring it up because I think it's important to show that, uh, particularly with a first time boat builder, you're going to have mistakes and obstacles that you're going to have to overcome down the line and that's just the way it goes. So. I wish I was better at it, but that's the way it went. And as we move forward, the frames, these deck beams all line up perfectly and we just got better at setting the frames and checking all the different marks that were required. So we'll move forward and address that when we start working up top here. Now, of course, you know, we're big supporters of our first responders. So if you're current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, the armed forces, any kind of public service job, and you want to have a patch from your agency represented on our salute to service wall, we would be honored to have it. Just send me an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. I'll give you our address and you can get that mailed out to us. We hope folks will go check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown's been a big supporter of ours and we hope that our viewers will help support companies that support the Sea Dreamer Project. And of course, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.